steady now. With Sony keen to champion the PlayStation's 3D capabilities, the Japanese giants would prove largely uninterested in pursuing 2D projects. It's ironic then, that one of the format's greatest platformers would fuse the two to great effect. Klonoa, door to Phantom Isle, makes inventive use of its unique perspective, while an abundance of charm and visual splendour make it truly captivating. It would prove a superb starting point for a consistently excellent, yet cruelly overlooked series. After Klonoa dreams of an airship crashing into a mountain nearby him, this event comes to fruition. Along with his ring spirit, Hugh Powell, they investigate, only to find a being of pure darkness known as Gadius. He aims to turn the land into a centre of nightmares, purging the dreams away. This sets up an adventure across several lands as Klonoa meets several tribes and must contend with a determined rival in the form of a sinister adversary known as Joker. While it's clear Klonoa is aimed at younger players, there's some surprisingly dark moments and interesting twists that belie its kawaii exterior. Door to Phantom Isle is a wonderfully designed, eye-catching 2.5D platformer. Divided into around a dozen stages, each tasks you with reaching the end of an ever-increasingly complex course. Stages are intricate, with several side routes which can often lead to captured inhabitants. Like Sonic, Klonoa can gain extra lives by collecting gems or by finding life coins. Visions also often conclude with a boss fight, which force you to find the boss's weakness and exploit it while ramping up the difficulty of the obstacles. There's some great use of perspective changes, including exhilarating rides down roller coaster like contraptions, alternate routes tucked into the background, and one particularly memorable boss which has a swinging platform back and forth. Klonoa also showcases unique jumping mechanics. You can perform a smaller jump and glide, both of which don't cover a whole lot of distance, but Hugh Powell's power helps compensate for this. You can grab enemies using the ring, which inflates creatures and allows you to either shoot them as projectiles, perform a double jump and slam enemies down to destroy objects below. It's a simple yet incredibly effective system adding a wrinkle that no other developer has really tried to emulate since. Enemies begin to evolve as you progress, and armoured goons, larger foes and mages conjuring firepower prove a tough step up for players. <laughs> But it's the sheer variety Namco has incorporated that will keep you glued to the screen. Rather than a continuous screen scroll, you'll often find yourself needing to backtrack, which keeps players on their toes. Levels often throw in new kinks to change how you use your abilities. Larger foes will expand when struck, which can provide a new platform to scale higher. One level has a light dart mechanic, which sees foes becoming invisible yet previously translucent platforms becoming solid. Later levels fuse multiple sections together, such as a late game task which forces you to collect four orbs in several locations to open the path. It's just incredibly made and a joy to play. The problems are few, but can include some frustrating spikes in difficulty and Klonoa's tendency to perform a slight slide when he stops running sometimes sending you over a platform. 
but these are more minor in the grand scheme of things. It's also a visual powerhouse for its time. Utilising 3D rendering, a la Donkey Kong Country, characters and creatures stand out visually amidst colourful and eye-catching backgrounds. Everything looks crisp and detailed, and moves along at a smooth rate. The few instances where FMVs are used are impressive, particularly the opening. Klonoa also boasts a fantastic soundtrack, one which utilises a range of instruments from flute arrangements accompanied by fast-paced drums, to joyous keyboard tracks which feel almost carnival-like. The sound effects are quite clear and sound impressive too. The game opts for gibberish voice acting which, admittedly, grates after a while, but outside of this, the sound is great. You can expect to spend around 10 hours to polish off Door to Phantom Isle. It builds nicely to a climactic, challenging conclusion, but there's incentive to return. Finding all six inhabitants trapped in each level will unlock a bonus vision, which to be frank is tough. You can also aim to earn 150 gems in each level if you're feeling explorative. In the end, Klonoa Door to Phantom Isle is simply a must own for anyone with interest in the genre. With its inspired mechanics, fantastic level design and eye-catching visuals, even the most cold-hearted gamer will warm to Klonoa's charm. When you factor in its surprisingly dark storyline, a decent slate of content and memorable boss battles, it adds up to a superb platformer. It's proof that Sony's ambivalence towards 2D was absurd. No matter how many dimensions a game uses, nothing can trump fantastic game design.